Welcome to episode 91 of Chew on This, a Nerd United podcast. I'm BJ. I'm Vic. Uh, so we need money, folks, because Vic is really sick. <laughs> <laughs> we need some sponsorship. So we are on Patreon.com. That's P-E-A. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Chew on This podcast where you can go and support us as little as a dollar a month. Um, I'm starting to sound like Sally Struthers. Please help. Help yeah. the the chew on, on this podcast, kids. As 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 little as a dollar a month, you can help support us, um, and really help us out. And we can bring you really awesome content, and go to cons, and do all the cool stuff. So that's patreon.com forward slash chew on this podcast. Let me be clear. I, I don't have I don't have like the hiv or anything like that. I'm just like really under the weather. So the shit I do for this podcast that we don't get paid for. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so. Um, Again, we're uh, we're promoting, we're not promoting legally, I don't know how you would call it, but um, I found out this really cool thing for uh, hashtag West Coast Wawa uh, that we're doing, and Wawa started doing mobile ordering. So, like, right oh now, my God. I would I would mobile order because I would be sick and I don't want to sit and wait, and I would, like, pay it all on my phone, order it up, and then go there and just pick it right up. It's that simple. That's crazy. Yeah, that would be sweet. So they just like package everything up that you wanted. Yeah, you just buy like, like you... a, a Wawa gift card. You load it up to your phone. It's kind of like how Starbucks works, but star- oh, but, okay. But unlike Starbucks, I'm not paying like sixty dollars for coffee, <laughs> and I get like really good sandwiches and other shit. So anyway, nice. West Coast hashtag West Coast Wawa. It's even more reason I'm upset that we don't have a Wawa out here. Yeah, so, we need to get one. I, you got, yeah. <laughs> You guys stay stay put. This is going to be hopefully a, a long podcast if my voice holds out. Um, this is the Sandy. Uh, this is our what casserole edition number eight, I think. Yeah, number eight, the this... Comic Con. Yeah, Comic Con Extravaganza edition. So lots of stuff to go through. Just sit tight. Um, what do we have on the list first coming out of Comic Con? Well, Warner Brothers had a really big day. Warner Brothers had like a tremendous day, apparently. And uh, <clears throat> and then they dropped like I don't know like fifteen thousand trailers or something. So yeah, there's a lot of trailers. Uh, a lot you, of trailers. If you liked us on Facebook this week, you got a lot of posts this week about trailers. Oh my gosh! Um, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if you go on our Facebook, we got tons. Uh, and of course, uh, chew on this meme. Those are kind of fun. You know, we're on Instagram at chew on this pod and Twitter at chew on this pod, so you can enjoy those funny memes that Vic does. Uh, so. Warner Brothers had a big, big day Saturday. Um, first of all, before we get into the DC stuff, uh, there was a, little, a movie that I've been interested in since they announced it a couple of years ago, and that's called Ready Player One. Mm. And it's based on a book that this guy wrote, I think, back in 2010. Um, I actually own the book. I'm about a quarter of the way through the book, uh, really enjoying it. It's like a technology Harry Potter type I mean, it's a really cool, like, action-adventure, but with virtual reality and stuff like that. Um, really looking forward to this movie. What did you think about the trailer? I really liked it. I, I was skeptical. I, I haven't been psyched about a Spielberg movie in a really long time. Mm. Um, I can't remember the last time I was excited for a Spielberg movie. Um, Minority yeah. Report? Yeah, it's been a Maybe. while. That's yeah. a long time ago. That's pretty pathetic. I mean, he's no. done some like good stuff. He's done like Lincoln, which I still haven't seen yet. But you know, he's done some good stuff. But there, there hasn't been that like, oh my god, he's doing Jurassic Park. I can't believe Steel- Spielberg is doing Jurassic Park. I can't wait for that movie. So I haven't, right. ha- I haven't had that type of a excitement yet. So when I saw, I, 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 I remember the announcement and I saw the trailer. And I was like, okay, I, I'm, I'm. It's been almost a decade since I've been excited for a Spielberg movie. So. So this this looked really cool. I geeked out when I saw the Iron Giant and like Freddy Krueger. I think was in there. Was Freddy Krueger in there? Freddy Krueger, yeah. Like he does this like jump thing and like blows Freddy Krueger up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw the DeLorean yep. uh, from Back to the Future. Um, does that? I think that's owned by Universal though. So I wonder like how many properties they had to pay for. In order I don't to put know. That in the I movie. feel like I feel like this movie probably would have been able to get more properties before the comic books movies were all about properties you know oh, like I feel yeah. like it would have been a lot easier to get a lot of the video games coming together or a lot of the other type of virtual reality stuff they wanted to get in here yeah it just looked like a smorgasbord of 80s references which 
I'm totally down for because that's that's the era that we grew up in, man. So it's like being able to see some of that stuff on screen or some of the stuff that we used to do in our own sandbox, you know, having Darth Vader pitted up against, you know, Jason or something like that. That's going to be pretty trippy to watch uh, that movie. I, had I can't wait. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fighting Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I would hope that the Transformers would obliterate the Turtles, but you never know. They might put up a good fight. I can't remember. I think Shiro was involved too at some point. Shiro! <laughs> <laughs> and I can guarantee you my, my imagination was better than any of the Transformer Turtle <laughs> movies that you've seen so far recent. <laughs> like Bumblebee and Shiro, like in the alleyway. <laughs> I think it was like Raphael and, and Shiro getting it on. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the other movie that uh, it actually dropped a new trailer as well was uh, Blade Runner 2049. And uh, I would have loved to have been at Comic-Con because I, I've never seen Harrison Ford there. And I think this might be his third time there now. Yeah. Um, I think Cowboys and, Alien, Cowboys and Aliens was the first time. And I was actually there at the con, but I wasn't at that panel. Um, Hall H has gotten to be completely insane. Like people come like five six o'clock the night before and they stay the night all night in that line just to see stuff and i apparently saturday was i mean if you read the lineup it was insane it like you had if you got in you might as well stayed there all day you didn't leave yeah you were packing a lunch and a dinner pretty much you know leave to go take a leak and hopefully they'll let you come back kind of thing um so yeah drink the water bottles you pee in the water bottles (laughs) people are like why is it stinking here? <laughs> um, oh God, uh, it's real quick. Like one time, the, I think the last time I was there, uh, somebody um, somebody got stabbed like by a pencil. It was really weird. It, like happened inside there while we were in there. Um, it was really Wick. Bizarre. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was Keanu Reeves. Yeah, Keanu Reeves panel. It. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, so that leads us to like you know DC. So well, that... well, well, let's go over the let's go over the other big sci-fi one. That okay. Warner Brothers dropped was Blade Runner. Oh yeah, I guess I didn't go over. it. I just mentioned it. Huh? I just glazed over it. Yeah, you mentioned um, Harrison Ford, but you didn't mention why it was there. <laughs> yeah. So Blade Runner um, has been like it's like this cult classic. You know, he's actually gone on record. You know, a long time ago, not really digging the fact that they made him go back and do that voiceover for the uh, for the theatrical version. If you watch the original Blade Runner in the director's cut, he doesn't, you know, Deckard or Harrison Ford doesn't do the voiceover. And so it's a lot more like you're figuring things out, on, but, you know, on your own kind of thing. You don't have that voiceover. So if you like watch the movie, the theatrical version, you can hear Harrison Ford's discontent in his voice. Like, he's just like, rah, 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 you know, like, I hate this shit, you know. Um, this movie looks pretty good. It looks uh, pretty much in line with the original one. It, like, kind of continues like that, the, the 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 visionary aspect of it and also the the story aspect of it looks very, very similar. You know, and I, it's saw, dr- I, yeah. saw, I saw the trailer, uh, a more updated trailer on IMAX for the first time today. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, it, it kind of, it kind of turned me off a little bit and here's why, mm. um, because Blade Runner didn't have any shitty prequels, right? So they don't have to fix anything and kind of retell the same story. And the trailer that I saw today seemed like they were just telling the same story almost of this, of Ryan Gosling's character trying to figure out who the fuck he is or what he is. Oh, really? Yeah. So I don't think I caught really caught that. So I was like, okay, this is because, you know, we'll get to the, you know, we'll get to the re special edition review of the force awakens. But, you know, we've said Mm -hmm. that, um, the force awakens is basically a new hope and it had to be made because of the prequels. And right. I feel like, there's a time and a place where you bring the fans back and you kind of re kind of rehash the certain things. And I don't think Blade Runner needed to do that. Mm. Like they could have just done like a continuation. Yeah, they could, they could have I mean, like, again, this is, I'm going based on the trailer. So I have like, like, I don't have any, like I wasn't there when they made the fucking movie. So, but <laughs> so but um, I'm just going based on the trailer and I'm thinking like, Oh, please don't be a rehash of like it. Cause like, cause I, 
Ridley Scott didn't direct this one, so which is a good thing because if you saw Alien Covenant this year, holy fuck, you know, you, yeah, you, you, I, I'm glad he didn't do it. So I'm glad the guy from Arrival did it. But I'm really hoping that you know his storytelling was what? able to to you know bleed through and and more so in what I saw in the trailer today. My thoughts on that is maybe they had to kind of rehash a little bit because it's been like thirty five years I think since the last one so maybe they're rehashing some of that but you're right they they need to have something that kind of uh continues the story a little bit um I don't know it looks I mean vis- visually it looks good too so we'll see like we'll see uh what he does because I loved I fucking loved Arrival so like that's the one big thing that this has going for it is that guy is really good yes yeah um, so moving on to DC. So a couple of things before the big panel, um, they did talk about Wonder Woman two. You know, officially is in the that works. That was just the, like that was just the dumbest thing ever. Like officially, Wonder <laughs> Woman's happening. Like what, the sequel to Wonder Woman. Like D, like it actually wouldn't have surprised me, but uh, like the fact that DC was going to officially announce the sequel to Wonder Woman two. I'm like, that's the only good fucking movie. Of course, you're going to announce the sequel. <laughs> the second I finished watching the movie, I knew you were going to have a sequel. Right, the movie's approaching like eight hundred million worldwide. I know. Yeah, it already, it's already sequel. the it's, like... it's already the biggest movie of the year, like in a, yeah. domestically. So there's yeah. no way they were not going to make a sequel. I mean, they made a fucking sequel to Batman v Superman. That thing was a piece of shit. <laughs> so there's no way they were not going to make a sequel to Wonder Woman. So that was just like there. That's like you telling me that they're going to have a Super Bowl this year. Like, oh really? Well, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> thanks for letting me know. I yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, football season's in September. It. Thanks. <laughs> um, and they did announce that uh, Affleck will still be Batman. I know all week long that's been a big deal too. Uh, they're talking about how they might try and usher him out, and then they've been talking about uh, the Flashpoint movie uh, with the. Now they're calling it the Flash Flashpoint. So. Now we get that oh, all over God. again. We just saw that last year in the in the TV show, which they kind of glossed over it after one episode. It was like five minutes long. Uh, yeah. So there's going to be a Flashpoint movie, and they're talking about Jeffrey Dean Morgan playing Batman in that movie. Here's my problem with announcing a Flashpoint movie. How can you announce a Flashpoint movie when you just started your universe three movies ago? Uh, that's what you I, that's you what... would have to establish everybody's character arcs in order that in order to 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 like turn them upside down right well this is what we've been talking about for for the last three years now because you can't you can't go by 50 years of comic books and everybody else's work for anybody to understand i guarantee you if you go to your wife or i go to your mom or i go to my dad or my sister who don't read the comic books and say like oh in flashpoint like thomas wayne is is the Batman and Martha Wayne is 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 the Joker, and they're like, okay, so what? You know, like they they wouldn't have like the oh my god, no fucking way, right? Because they they didn't establish that in the new DCEU. You no. have to establish that you you have to fucking have character arcs in order to turn it upside down. There's no character arcs like right now. The, how can how can the first movie? How can the first solo Flash movie? be something where it fucks up his timeline where you don't even know what his original timeline is. Well, supposedly they're going to be, I mean, they're doing, and this is what really bugs me is that they're going to be doing character arc shit in justice league, but there's so many characters in that movie. So what are they going to flashpoint flashpoint justice league? I don't know, but if you watch the, the trailer for justice league, you see like the flash, you see, a Barry Allen in the jail, like talking, looking at his father through the glass. Right. You see Aquaman going to talk to the underwater king or whatever the fuck. You see, um, like, Cyborg becoming who he becomes. I guess because his was that his dad or mentor or scientist guy. I don't his know. dad. His dad. Okay, so they're they're giving essentially a full movie story arc within probably five minutes in the movie. For each character. We already know Wonder Woman's backstory because we just watched it. So, and we already know Batman's because we've seen that 16,000 times. But not in this version. No. Well, in Batman vs. Superman, we saw him, his father getting killed for the 20th time. So, Which, again, Snyder did the best version of it. 
Well, I mean, he did, but it's like, was it even necessary? Why can't you just, like in Spider-Man we just watched, you didn't see him get bit by the spider or Uncle Ben die for the 20th time. No, but it really, it really, it really, like, fucked up his whole, no, Batman v Superman is a Man of Steel 2 movie, and it's like, well, you just started the movie about about Batman. (laughs) Yeah, it's, I mean. Fucking liar. We could go. (laughs) could go the rounds. I mean, we talked about yeah, that let's, for let, hours Yeah, and let's hours. just skip over that. So Whatever. anyway, Affleck is still Batman, supposedly. I don't believe anything because they've said before, like he was writing the script and directing it, and then like a minute later he wasn't. And so I but don't believe anything. they do have anything. Matt Reeves. It, Matt Reeves they do have. They so, do. So with with the success or unfortunately not the – as it this War of the Planet of the Apes should be one of the most – the like the – the biggest financial winners of the summer, and it's it's, it's not. not. I it's can't one believe of, it's it. By far, one of the best movies of the year. By oh yeah, far, I, th- that I, that I thought we, it was that better. We reviewed it, on the show. It was. I mean, folks, I'm going to say this right now. It was better than Spider Man by by a long shot. Yes, it it's was. It's so than good, and it should have done a hundred and fifty million dollar weekend. It's it's insanely good, and yeah. it bugs me that it's you know dying by the roadside right now. So that um, it does have it does have something going forward. It's not like it's like David Ayers like doing the Batman or whatever. It's they got somebody who knows what they're doing. So right. flash forward, no pun intended, to the Justice League trailer. Yeah, I kind of liked it. It it seemed like they it was a coherent uh, uh, trailer. Boy, that's and, the first time you've ever said that. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, they only have they had four minutes. It's not saying a lot when you can't fuck shit up in four minutes. <laughs> <coughs> Although I do have a gripe. It's again because you screwed up so much shit beforehand. It's like um, the there's that line where Bruce is talking to Wonder Woman or Diana, and he says something like, "You know, Superman was a beacon of hope for everybody." I'm like, "Yeah," oh. and you fucking really. And he was such a beacon of hope that you tried to kill him so easily, you fucking retard. There's no emotional attachment to anything these fucking guys say. Literally none. No. None. That was a complete throwaway line. Anytime, that, that anytime they say something, some shit like that, all, my eyes just roll. And it's like, oh, you know... Like you read the you read the synopsis for the movie, it's like oh, renewed in his renewed faith in humanity from Superman. I'm like, what? How? That doesn't make any sense. Because they had the same mother's name? Fuck you. Yeah, they love the color blue. Yeah. They're just like, you, we're best friends. They now. were on the same, they, they realized that they were in the same fantasy football league. <laughs> that would be more believable than fucking Martha. <laughs> if you've ever been in a fantasy football league, you'd understand. Right. Watch the show, The League. It's awesome on yeah, Netflix. Yeah, like, anyway. But uh, uh, besides those little nit- not nitpicks, they're g- clearly glaring plot holes or character like plot fuck ups. Um, the trailer I thought was pretty impressive. Um, yeah, it, it seemed a little bit brighter, and, and you know, and they keep they keep reporting that it's it's Joss Whedon, you know, um, he, reshooting. They, they said today or was it yesterday that he's possibly going to get a co director uh, credit. On it, which means that's which way means more he's than doing a shooting. lot. That's way yeah. more than a couple of pickup shots. Yeah, exactly. Because um, uh, Gareth Edwards got full director like credit for for Rogue One. Yeah, and Tony Gilroy was it did like two or three weeks of reshoots or something. Right. Or, like, so, so yeah, they, I mean, they basically reshot the ending for that movie, and he still didn't get co director or even rumblings of co director. No, he he got a good chunk of change though. Yeah. But. You got like five million bucks to do that. Now I have a I have a really good feeling that Joss Whedon watched that movie from beginning to end, all put together because they've they've had the movie's been in the can for ages. <clears throat> so I have a feeling that he was able to watch the thing from beginning to end and then go, uh, uh-uh, uh, like we're <laughs> taking this shit out. Yeah, <laughs> more Wonder Woman. I mean, the the trailer begins with Wonder Woman. Yeah, why is Themyscira um, the only fucking place that's not gloomy? Yeah, <laughs> even even Aquaman's under the water was brighter than Gotham City and Metropolis. Well, Aquaman's like on the bottom of the ocean. I'm like, shouldn't it be like he's like I don't know if he was going to Atlantis or not, but I was like, Atlantis is kind of fucking dirty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know who I like? Who I wasn't sure about? What uh, 
J.K. Simmons is fucking perfect as as Gordon, man. Oh yeah, he was great as um, he was great as uh, what the uh, J. Jonah Jameson. Exactly. Yeah, but he really like. I mean, I loved um, the other guy. I loved uh, what's his name? Shit, uh, from the Nolan series. Uh, oh, I love the Commissioner uh, Gordon. Oh, I love Jesus. Commissioner Gordon. I know I'm, uh, I'm drawing Oldman. a blank. Oh uh, yeah, okay. So I love Gary Oldman, but this guy looked like he came right out of the cartoon, or like right out of the comic books. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but what's again like because you didn't establish the Batman beforehand. Now all of a sudden you're talking with this Commissioner Gordon and this Batman, and it's like in Batman v Superman again. You can just point to points, point to parts in that movie where. It doesn't seem like the Batman has been doing shit for a really long time. You just told us that off camera. Right. So, it, it, again, it's fucking DC fucking shit up, not, or Snyder fucking shit up, and not just thinking that we know this shit because Batman's been around for ages. Well, no, you got to establish certain things in your movies, and that's kind of one of them. Well, you can't pretend sure, that. Yeah. You can't pretend that the Batman like doesn't really exist or nobody really understands what the Batman is about. Like nobody acknowledged the fact that the Batman was coming back even more violent. Nobody said that. Right. So whatever, fuck them. <laughs> so I don't know if you caught some of the uh, CW shows trailers. No, I um, didn't. I stayed away because, because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I, I watched the flash one and I watched arrow and I, I, I do oh, you have know what? I say- lied. I'm sorry. I lied. I didn't watch a trailer, but I, you I the reason liar. no, but I I didn't watch a trailer, and the reason is because I read somewhere where the Flash like got their big baddie or the Arrow got their big baddie for the entire season, and it just like left the, that title of the article just left a bad taste in my mouth. Where mm-hmm. it was like, again, I got to wait an entire fucking season that looks like going to be Cisco or somebody like you know this time. That's a speedster. <laughs> so. I- I, I don't think they're gonna uh, watch the trailer. I don't think they're gonna do the speedster thing anymore. I think that's that's finished. It's somebody, it's somebody else, and I think it's from a different uh, one of the other multiverses. Yeah. So like like Earth nineteen or some shit like that. Um, and also Arrow actually looked kind of interesting because it looks like Deathstroke's gonna stick around for a little bit. So uh, their villains are so fucking bad that they had to go back to the first season and get the same villain. <laughs> I don't know if Deathstroke's going to be a villain, though. He, I thought at the end of Arrow, they, like, joined forces and became friends or some shit. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, he'll probably turn his back on him or something will fucking happen. <laughs> saying it right now. <laughs> saying that it Arrow, right now. Arrow and Deathstroke will fight. And Deathstroke is a Batman villain, I thought. But... Oh, God. So is fucking Ra's al Ghul. God damn it, these fucking shows. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I didn't watch Supergirl Legends of Tomorrow, and I didn't see the Black Lightning one either, although I heard that was pretty good too. I didn't, I didn't catch that. Um, let's see. Uh, what about Marvel? At the end of the day, I think on Saturday, Marvel had a really big, uh, a big panel. They showed yeah. a Black, Black Panther trailer that we haven't got to see yet. They're not going to release it. Yeah, that's a bummer. Um, the Thor Ragnarok trailer they released, and it was it was pretty awesome. Yeah, I was actually looking forward to I, If I could have picked the two, I would have rather them released the Black Panther one because I wasn't impressed with the first trailer. Yeah. The yeah, CG it's... was really bad in the first trailer, in my opinion. The, the ending shot was really awful. Um, yeah. And I, and I would have really liked to have seen what they saw there, but I heard, like I read, that it was really, really good. Um, saw a lot more stuff in there and a, a big teaser to the costume. Oh, wow. Did they, they've updated all the costumes, right? I, th- I thought I heard that. that well, you know, that... in the comic books, in the comic books, he was originally all black and then they changed it over where he was black and gold and something happens in the trailer where it changes the, the costume. Gotcha. And the place went gotcha. nuts. So I, w- I would have liked to have seen that trailer. Uh, the Thor Ragnarok one was pretty good. Um, Actually, it, it looked really good. Actually, like, um, it looks like Guardians of the Galaxy three. It does, and- but you know what? That's that's what Thor should have been. Not Guardians of the Galaxy, like funny, but that's what one of the biggest problems I keep thinking about the Thor stuff is the the Dark World. They spend so much time on Earth, and it's like, wait a minute, you 
you could have taken Thor and just left him in Asgard and made a story that way, you know? Yeah. Um, and it would have been fine. So it finally looks like Thor is going to get his, you know, off world story, which is kind of good. And it didn't, uh, my worries about him and Hulk in the movie together are kind of slow, slowly dissipating because their chemistry is really good together. Yeah, that scene where they're talking together, where Hulk is talking, which apparently he's going to be talking a lot. He's kind of the, the what did you say? The Drax. He's yeah, it seemed Drax. like it seemed like Hulk was Drax and Thor was kind of Quill a little bit, like Star Lordy. Yeah, that the the line in the movie. I mean, you sent me an article or something with the line in the movie where he goes, "Oh, that's my friend from work." Oh yeah, great. which 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 is a great line. That was like given by a, a Make a Wish child who visited the set. Yeah, great story. He, he suggested he suggested that line. That is fantastic. Yeah, it's great. I, I I love shit like that. He was just there to visit the set, and now he's going to be immortalized in the movie. <sighs> that's so awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's amazing for their family and all that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This that that movie Send that just kid looks a like fun. to the premiere. Oh shit! Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Um. No, that movie just looks like tons of fun. And the first two, I mean, I did enjoy them for what they were, but they're kind of the the they're the they're like the cars too of the Marvel properties, you know, like they're, they're kind not, of down they're there. They're not that bad. No, they're not that bad. They're they're just not great. They're not Iron you know? Man three bad. Right, right. <clears throat> but uh this looks awesome. Yeah, this looks um, like a lot of fun. Um yeah, it looks like a lot of a lot of fun with, with Thor and Hulk. Uh, having them on screen and interacting like they they do a lot, so it's going to be fun to watch them. Yeah, um, I guess they all. Someone mentioned, or I read somewhere that the collector and the the game master are brothers. Yeah, I don't know if that's true in the comics, but I know in the movies are they doing that. That's what I read. I don't know if it's true or not. Yeah. Um, well, it it, it kind of makes sense in the fact that. I, so I went to, I don't think I mentioned this on the podcast, but I went to Disneyland recently and we rode the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, breakout ride. It used to be called Twilight Zone, you know, it used to be called Tower, it used to be called Tower of Terror and uh, they replaced it with Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, if you walk through the Guardians of the Galaxy ride, you're inside the collector's room, and it's so awesome. There's Easter eggs everywhere. Um, a lot of the stuff you saw in the movie is like in cages and in glass cases and all that stuff in there. Really cool. Um, Ultron's in there, you know, a bunch of other stuff. But I noticed there was like this, I think, an artifact or a painting or something of the Grandmaster in, inside there. And so I was like, that's interesting. And then if you watch Guardians of the Galaxy 2 movie, at the very end, when the credits are rolling, you saw like Baby Groot all over the place, right. and then you saw all the characters like, you know, from the movie dancing and singing and all that stuff. And in one shot is the Grandmaster. Right, right, that's right. So I think it's all tying together. I think that uh, my feeling is that Thor Ragnarok is going to tie heavily, especially at the end, probably the end credits. Yeah, is going to tie heavily to what we're about to talk about now, which is the Avengers Fidelity War. Okay, so just so you know, we didn't see the official licensed version of this. We had to watch some shitty cell phone version of this and piece them all together. Yes. And the shitty pieced together cell phone versions made me cream harder than Justice League ever will. Yes. I mean, some shit was out of focus. Some parts were only 20 seconds long. But what we saw, what we could piece together in descriptions online is, holy fuck, this movie's insane. Yeah. This movie I, it, is goddamn insane. Every frame of that trailer was like, holy shit, holy shit, holy yeah. shit. You there, was know? No, there was no wasted frame of anything. And, and here's, here's, the, here's the thing about this. It's been a decade leading up to this war. It's been almost leading... 22, almost 22 movies. Something like so that. So you've been falling in love with these characters or hating these characters for, you know, those the, almost a dec over a decade. I think it's over a decade. Yeah, over a decade, and and now you you now it's finally your payoff is finally coming, 
I mean, they've been oh. trying to, these stones have been sprinkled across the MCU for, for over a decade, and finally it's, it's coming out. And I was watching this shitty cell phone trailer thinking that Marvel was going to show me somebody that was going to die. I mean, that's how emotional the trailer was for me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because I have watched these characters in so many movies. It's, it's, it's night and day compared and it makes it pisses me off even more because like again all i do is what fucking all i do is watch cartoons i'm watching the batman animated series because i finished the superman animated series Mm -hmm. again and i'm like watching the batman stuff i'm like oh god this stuff is so good you care about the characters in batman you care about the characters in superman series and like i you know and batman v superman was on hbo this uh this weekend and I, I flipped it on again, like I, I don't know why, because I'm a glutton for punishment. And it's fucking, like a train wreck. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it a train. <laughs> comes on, and no matter what part I, I put it on, it fucking pisses me off, because it's just it, it it's such a rush job. Yes, Justice League will come out before Infinity War, but I guarantee you that like it it's n- you're not going to have the same emotional attachment. Mm-hmm. And if you there's no way. There's no factual way that you can give me an emotional attachment to any of these characters other than Wonder Woman. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, if something bad happens to Wonder Woman, I've, I've, absolutely you're going to be upset. But, like, you're right. I mean, even in Batman and Superman, when Superman died, I felt no emotional attachment. I was like, good, die. Like, you, you're, yeah, I hate because, you anyway. Because there was no, there was like, he was whining the fucking, like, he was whining for four hours of screen time. I was like, yeah. look, if you don't want to save us, then fuck off. I don't give a fuck. Like, make a decision. Go climb right. a mountain. Go talk to some fucking rocks. I don't give a shit. You know, <laughs> do something. Just yeah. make a goddamn decision and stop peeling out of the fucking neighborhood like some dickhead in a goddamn like souped up Honda Civic with a stupid like weed whacker muffler. Like I fucking <laughs> hate that. I hate the fact that in Snyder's universe, every time Superman takes off, he's got to break the fucking sound barrier. What a dick. Right. And every time he lands, he breaks the ground. <laughs> yeah. What a fucking asshole. Superman is a fucking asshole. We just fixed this. Yeah. Why? Yeah, why? Like, and not only that, but, like, you're going to know where the fuck you landed every time. Like, oh, well, Superman keeps landing in this one spot. His house must be close to here. (laughs) Uh, I'm sure they have more than one spy satellite up there to, to keep tabs on him, too. Well, that and the fact that he keeps telling everybody where the fuck he's from. Yeah. I'm just a farm boy. Just I'm narrow just a Kansas it down. farm boy. Yeah. <laughs> just narrow it down for him even fucking harder, like or easier well, for them. Well, it's easier now because he died and, and Clark Kent died at the same time. So if they come back at the same time, right. like, wait a, wait a minute. And yeah, they exactly. tease that. That's something we didn't mention uh, earlier, even though we're on Marvel right now. But earlier, <clears throat> they you see um, Alfred talking to someone and you think, Oh, that's got to be Superman that they're talking that he's talking to. It sounds like it's Superman because he like stumbles on the word hope. And, yeah, you know that's what they keep referring to. The what was he is... doing? Working on the Batmobile? What was he fucking doing? Like, why was Superman there? He was probably reading up on who Bruce Wayne was. Yeah, <laughs> and why didn't Alfred say like, "Look what you did to this car. It, this has cost billions of dollars." Well, probably and you, in the and you fucking probably, wrecked it. Probably in the theatrical version, it's. He's just going to, like, pop in and, like, blow a hole through the fucking bat cave or something. You know, like, not be subtle about it. He's going to hold right. up, like, a giant sign that says, I'm back. <laughs> like, why do you have to keep wrecking things? Like, you didn't have to wreck the Batmobile, like, stand in the middle of the road. You could have just, like, flew over and grabbed it and slowed it down. You oh, know? fuck. That's so stupid. Anyway. God damn it. Um, I hate God it. damn those fucking movies. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, back to Infinity War. This is something that we've been waiting for since we were just like little kids. This is like the ultimate thing. The ultimate thing. And well, I Well, actually, actually, no. This is not something I've been waiting for since I was a little kid. But that's how good Marvel is at putting these movies out. Making because, you believe that? <laughs> well, well, yeah. Because like I get like going back to growing up, like you will find photographs of me in my Batman and Superman under ruse. You will not find me in... Iron Man under ruse, Thor under ruse, because fuck those guys. Those guys were like fucking BC characters, you know, BC yeah. and D characters that like, yeah, yeah, Thor, God of Thunder, who gives a shit, right? But like, I care more about Thor than I do about Batman and Superman. What the fuck? Right. So you care about a little <clears throat> a little raccoon with a gun. 
Yes, more exactly. Than, I care about a fucking talking Justice tree. League. No, I think you're right about that. Justice League is definitely something that we've all been waiting for for so long, but it's it's weird. I, I mean, if I couldn't have predicted this 10 years ago, if someone told me no. Justice League movie is going to come out and it's going to be all fucked up by this guy, I'd have been like, no, that movie's going to make like $2 well, billion. think about dollars. that. Think about that. If you were like, okay, <clears throat> which movie would you rather see when you were growing up? Justice League? Or the Avengers, and I'm like, aren't the Avengers led by Iron Man and like, yeah, yeah, Mister Fantastic, and I would, you know, and, and maybe Hulk I, and Thor's in there. And I, I have, like, I'm not I have fucking had, that. I have had that argument many times with people, um, and I, I'm not a Marvel or DC fanboy by any stretch of the means, but but if you put a gun to my head and said like, who is more like popular or who, whatever the biggest rogue of people or whatever, I would say DC hands down. Dude, you know how many and times I've rewatched the cartoons? Like I've watched justice league, justice league unlimited young justice. I just said I was rewatching Batman animated series after I just rewatched Superman animated series. Like I'm, I'm really a DC guy at heart, but yeah. fuck. That's why I guess that's why we trash their movies so bad because we're so fucking pissed. That's probably why you go back and watch the cartoons to get that bad yeah. taste out of your mouth. It is. Um, God. Anyway, so Avengers: Infinity War. <laughs> yeah. So Thanos looks fucking crazy. He just looks. Oh God! It looks finally so they're up against. Powerful. Yeah, finally they're up against somebody that they're going to have a lot of trouble uh, going after. Um, I saw. I think I saw Doctor Strange in the trailer. Yes, um, there's that shoot. scene where Doctor Strange is like actually making the the magical like platforms for Peter Quill to jump on, so you can shoot oh, Thanos. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so many. Oh, there's so much eye candy in this movie. God, fuck. So good. I know. And that's like some of our favorite things is when the the characters uh, use you, their powers yeah. together yeah. to go after the bad guys. It's so, so fucking cool. Um, I can't wait. I, I've heard, I read somewhere that, you know, the Avengers 3 and 4 put together is going to cost like a billion dollars or something like that. I'd be surprised um, just from the trailer alone it. that this movie doesn't make $2 billion, like a billion dollars in like in like America alone. Yeah, it it looks yeah, this this has Force Awakens like it's going to be running for its money for sure. Uh I I can't wait. I I'm, I'm super stoked. And then they did do uh they did talk about a lineup. They talked about Captain Marvel, they talked about uh Spider-Man, which I think uh comes out directly after the uh, second Avengers movie or the fourth one I mean. And uh, and then Ant Man and the Wasp comes out next summer. They've got a big lineup. They've got you know quite a few movies. In, only two or know, th- only two or three movies a year, which is not a lot. I think they're doing like three a year at like three months apart, or or next year it's like two months apart or something like that. It's crazy. There's a, yeah, there's not a lot, but there's that's not a lot of movies for a year with the amount of properties that they have. I mean, just list the Avengers alone. They should have. They could have a movie every month. Yeah, they could. They could. Or well, well that would happen every other year though, if they were to do that. But Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's it's looking good over at Marvel right now. They've got some really good shit in the pipeline that I cannot wait. Um next up, uh actually I mean our list is kind of dwindling here. These are just the big ones that I that I thought were kind of important to talk to talk about. But Netflix uh has a lot of good shit going on right now and the but the biggest one that blew everyone away at Comic Con was uh, Stranger Things two, uh, season two, which you could I think you can go online and watch the trailer actually. Yes, you can. Um, it looks insane. I mean, it looks like they definitely stepped up their game. Um, the Duffer Brothers, whatever they're called, uh, these I want to meet these guys. They're like my heroes. They've really like brought back the essence of the eighties, you know, genre horror genre whatever um, into the twenty first century, and it's just it's just makes me giddy. It's just so cool. So, and this looks like, you know, oh, it takes yeah, place they, in they started 1984. Off, they start they start off with the fucking uh dragon dragon's lair. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they're in Ghostbusters outfit for Halloween and so you're like, "Oh shit, this is like circa 84." Yeah. You know, when they're doing this. And that that just that really excites me. Yeah, they I um, mean, yeah, that trailer looks awesome. I can't wait for that to come out. Defenders, that was another one. I mean, let's just go. Let's go through the other stuff now too. Um, Defenders. What did you think? So what? Out. Okay, what did you think about Defenders? I mean, honestly, like it was better than the first one. Better than the first trailer. Yeah. Yeah, 
I, um, I, think so I too. still fucking hate Iron Fist. Um, unless he like, I mean, obviously they 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 announced Iron Fist two, uh, the trailer. I mean, yeah. sorry, the season a uh, season yeah. two for Iron Fist. They are starting with a new showrunner. I'm like, okay, great. That doesn't change the fact that this guy doesn't know anything about kung fu. Like, I don't give right. a fuck that his hand's glowing. If he fucking threw a spinning back kick like he did like that, even with a glowing hand, I'd still laugh in his fucking face. Yeah, and I still don't see him punching people with that hand. I still see him, like, hitting walls It's only one hand. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't... I don't know. And they didn't tease the outfit or, you know... Oh, speaking of outfits, we have a meme out there with the Flash's outfit. Uh, God, it's so easy to trash these fucking morons. Why is the <laughs> Flash's costume held together by fucking butcher's twine? Yeah, it looks like it was just jizzed on or something. Like, it I know, it, I know it's the Flash, but... Why did you have to make it so complicated for him to put that shit on? Like, can you imagine trying to put that shit on? Why is there string? Even the normal outfits. I don't know what that is. It's some, like, uh, yeah, it does. all over his fucking costume. What the fuck? Like, he ran through a spider web or something. Or silly string. Like, super, like, Batman silly stringed him or something like that for a joke. God fucking assholes. Uh, it it looks it his costume looks horrible. In fact, like honestly, everybody but Batman and Wonder Woman's costume. Cyborg everybody, looks they terrible. all look like shit. Like I said, Cyborg looks like a transformer from Michael Bay. The Flash looks like a Power Ranger, except the Power Rangers costumes actually are, are, are way cooler now because they don't have fucking silly string all over them. Yeah. <laughs> um Voltron season three trailer. Uh, yes. Drop. Oh um, man, looked man, that really looks, good. Yeah, that looks awesome. They're killing it. They're just really killing that show. I'm really surprised. What'd you think of Bright? Uh, I don't know yet. I, I, so it's the same thing. Like if you're telling me, like you know, Shyamalan is making a movie. M Night Shyamalan's making a movie or whatever. I would say, who cares? Back, you know, a few years you've ago, you've lost faith in. You've Will lost Smith. faith, and and Will Smith, the same thing. It's like. Yeah, he was the best part of Suicide Squad. I grant you that, but that's just like saying, you know, my day old pizza still, you know, tastes okay. It's better like than it, shit, right? It's still better than a turd in your mouth, right? But, but, um, so I don't know. I I think it's cool that he's like in a sci fi thing. I just have to see it. Netflix right now is shelling out hundreds of millions of dollars to make movies. I just it, don't know about this one. It just looks weird. And I'm for weird. I mean, God, like, I'm for the weird stuff. It just something, I think it's Will Smith. Something about this trailer just turned me the fuck off. It's kind of like, like, you know what it is? It's like, okay, I watched the Mummy trailer, and it had Tom Cruise in it. Yeah. And and I was like, just something off about this. Like, just something off about it. And well, that wasn't, that wasn't Tom Cruise for me. That movie just looked dumb. Well, I'm, but I'm saying is, like, it, he just looked out of place. Right. And so I, I don't know, like I'm watching the bright trailer and just like, I'm not sure yet. So I, I, I don't know. I guess I got to reserve judgment till I see it. Isn't but David like, Ayers doing that one? I th- bright. David oh, Ayers you, is doing bright. You know I what? I, you might be right. Yeah. Well, maybe it's be, my subconscious, right. like think like telling myself like, Hey, it's <laughs> Will Smith and David Ayers again. <laughs> you got a knee jerk reaction. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, uh, I just started my eyes started twitching. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, I got it. My dick itches. Yeah. I'm starting to get a rash. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I don't know. Um, I did watch uh, Oak Jaw on Netflix, and I really enjoyed that. That is really different. Yeah. Um, I really good. Watching you that got, too. Yeah, you got to catch that. Um, uh, so what else was released? We they've got. got uh, uh, well, they talked about Luke Cage season two. They talked about The Punisher. Uh, which is coming up, I think, after the Defenders. Right, some other news dropped, too, though. Like, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer is joining Ant-Man. Oh, yeah. She's going to be... Which surprised me, because I really thought they were going to go after Sharon Stone, which would have reunited her with uh, Michael Douglas. I'm okay but, with this one. But I like Michelle Pfeiffer a lot. Yeah, I I, I think it's great that Michelle Pfeiffer is, is in the movie. Uh, really like her, always did. And I can see her in that costume. Yes. Um, yes, me too. Yeah, I'm. I, it's so weird. Like, if you told me years ago, like an Ant Man movie's coming out, I'd be like, "Get out of here! That's fucking retarded." Yeah, it's, this, it's just good. They're just know what they're just, doing. Yeah, they got it. I mean, they definitely got a tried and true formula, and that makes me wonder about 
some certain directors, you know, like, you know, Edgar Wright. I love Edgar Wright. I love his stuff. Um, it just makes you wonder, like, what was it that pissed Marvel off? Like, they must have a formula, and he just didn't want to do the formula. Maybe you not. Know, something. I don't, I don't but know. But you know what? Like, that's the one good thing about Disney and Marvel is, like, they, they have shown that if something doesn't seem right they're going to say like wait a minute we got to stop this right now and fix it before it gets too late you know otherwise yeah. otherwise you get a fantastic four movie which leads me into my other bit of news uh i don't know if this is comic comic con news but it came out during comic con weekend so i'm going to say it is that uh now there's evidence that they will be doing another fantastic four reboot but more kid friendly fuck what the hell uh, why? I you mean, know, if there's still, anyone pop- worse, if there's anyone mm. worse than fucking DC, it's anyone attached to a Fantastic Four movie. Yeah, Fuck. it's well, it's Fox in general. I mean, I I love the X Men movies. Don't get me wrong, but there's no continuity to any of that shit. And I love continuity, but there's no continuity to that universe. And now they're doing a Dark Phoenix saga, and they're doing they're doing two or three different type of X Men movies. Um, oh, speaking of X Men, they 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 that new trailer for Gifted came out this weekend too. Now that looked really good. Looks really good, and Legion is really good. So they've they've got a couple properties there that you know could do. But New Mutants looked. I I don't know. I didn't. No, I don't I know like if I really either. liked. I didn't um, like that. But going back to Fantastic Four, y- you dickheads are literally just making this shit. Just so you can keep the property until because so you don't have to give it back to Marvel. That's the only reason you're making this movie. Is you have no yeah. idea what the fuck you're doing. But they could they could wait ten years. I mean, what did Fantastic Four come out like two years ago? Yeah, they could like wait that. another eight years before they have to make that. It's like it's it's got a ten year rule. I mean, if they were smart, they'd wait maybe like three years. They'd get together with Marvel and do the same deal they did with Spider Man, because essentially Marvel like helped Sony make that movie, but Sony footed the bill. You know, just so they could borrow Spider-Man. A, a, a kid-friendly Fantastic Four reboot? What the fuck was that first movie? I, I I don't know. The first movie, I think, was pretty close to the source material, but at the same time, no, it was it done was really not terrible. at all. I mean, fucking Victor Von Doom? How is that close to the source material? Well, no. I mean, like, the the, the Fantastic Four being known by the... By, the people on Earth, and they're that's in the like news all one the time. part of the entire movie that sucked <laughs> balls. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but at least, I, like, I had fun in that first movie. The second movie, the only thing I really liked about it was Silver Surfer. I, I really dug, did but not he like that of, first movie at all because before that, I had seen The Incredibles. Well, yeah, there's that. I mean, Invisible, like Jessica Alba, was miscast Just completely. Time. To everybody except for Johnny Storm and Michael Chiklis was miscast, like miscast in that movie. Yeah, I kind of have to agree there. Yeah, I. So they're gonna reboot it seriously? That's <coughs> that's what the rumor I didn't, is. I didn't mind this other cast. I, I, it's just that the story was shit. It was two different movies shoved together in its ass. Well, they still fucked up Victor Von Doom again. <coughs> There's a, oh, yeah. there was that rumor that they're making a Victor Von Doom movie. Uh, and I'm like, okay, can you get somebody that actually would sound like they're from Latveria, even though it's a made of place? Oh, and you need to have Spider-Man in that movie, too. Oh, fuck. Oh, I, I, I seriously, like, everybody. really, the, 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 person, the, the <clears throat> people who are worse than the people, like, than Snacks, Zack Snyder are the people who are doing the Fantastic Four movies. For fuck's yeah. sake, just let a five-year-old do it. At least their excuse is that they're five years old. What's your excuse? Oh, speaking of which, so that news dropped today that Todd McFarlane oh, is God. going to be directing right. essentially an independent film right? You know, for Blumhouse called Spawn, which is the thing that he created back in 92 or whatever, which I owned a Spawn number one comic for a loved, long time. I, I, I loved the it. HBO cartoon. Oh, God, yeah, that's it. really great. Um, so I'm I was like, really excited that. when the movie came out, and oh, you know, New Line Cinema fucked it up. Um, they didn't give him creative control, so yeah. he really sounds like a used car salesman every time he talks about the. He's been talking about this movie for fucking ever, and so he's going to be writing, directing, 
the movie on a ten million dollar budget. I don't. I mean, the ten million dollars. The effects alone, like these days, would be the credits alone are going to cost a fucking million dollars. <laughs> you can't even make a comedy for ten million dollars, like in this day and age. Like, if you put Seth Rogen in a movie, there's your ten million dollars right now. Like, yeah. seriously, how the fuck is he going to make this movie at? For ten million dollars, uh, give everybody back end deals. I guess. and not not I mean, not to know. mention the fact that he's never directed anything in his entire life. He's never written a screenplay. Like this, yeah. this sounds fucking awful. Yeah, this sounds like a really bad idea. This is this is like, this is like Frank Miller all over again. You remember when when Frank Miller did that um, old timey the old comic book of, of his, one of his mentors, the Spirit. Spirit, yeah, that movie was a big piece of shit. But I loved Sin City, but he didn't direct that. I mean, that was Robert Rodriguez, right? So with like, but I remember going to that. I was at that Comic Con when they showed footage of uh, Sin City, and uh, it was it was incredible. Yeah, but um, that's that's like two that's like two people knowing what they're doing, working together. Yeah, but Frank Miller he can't direct. He no. Can't, he can he can write like a mother. He can write shit and yeah, but the visuals some and all people that. some people so these people are going to give like him the green light, right? To to write and write and direct this movie. But like who's going to be his like they're just going to give him like yes men. So you're just going to yeah. fucking you're going to get a piece of shit for 10 million dollars. It's, it's a 10 million dollar episode 1 all over again. Fuck. It's not you know um, and I, I actually want to see a good Spawn movie because I think I that, do too. I think it's so it's so unique. ripe for yeah, it's so ripe for this day and age for somebody to make a rated R like Spawn movie. But somebody just needs to fucking tell Todd McFarlane, hey, go play with your toys. We got this. Like somebody who loves Spawn as much as he does and knows how to direct a movie, right. Have him on set giving, you know, advice. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, he notes. would surprise the fuck out of me if he did it. Because I just don't see, uh, I mean, the costume alone. Yeah, you know, be like and 100 grand. Like, if, and if you have any, uh, he's a spawn of hell. So how are you going to do hell on a $10 million budget for the entire film? Yeah, because spawn, he, effects wise, is going to be bigger than like, let's say, Ghost Rider. Because they essentially like have chains and he's got that cape and all that stuff, so his effects is more than what Ghost Rider would be because he's got like a motorcycle that like forms. Spawn like would need to be like seamless, like the way Vision is. Yes. Oh, because if, yeah, if yeah. you watch the behind the scenes Black shit, Panther, Vision looks yeah. dumb. Like Vision looks r- like he looks really stupid when he doesn't yeah. have CG. Like he's just got like his paint, his face is like all painted all weird and shit like that. It's not, it doesn't look like it does in the movies. And then they CG over that and it looks seamless. That's yeah, what you're going to need to do for Spawn. That's not going to cost under $10 million. No, that, that whole effect, I'm, I'm sure Vision by himself is like five to $10 million just to do for the movie. Yeah, I have no idea how this guy is a first time director, a first time screenwriter is going to make. A ten million dollars well, Spawn cause, movie. Because here's the deal: he owns the right. He's the sole owner of the rights of Spawn. Yeah, I know. That's I why know. nobody. That's why no. That's why he's. That's why it's been taking so long for him to make this movie. Because yeah. Because everybody's nobody, like, nobody's no. like, I'm gonna fucking give you the direct. Like, I'm gonna give you creative control. Yeah, we're gonna. We got a hundred million dollar budget. We're gonna make yeah. this thing, and get our own director. And our, yeah, I know. I mean, he wanted same sole th- creative control. That's the problem. Yeah. That is a problem. But he didn't but he didn't have any legs to stand on. Like if he was somebody that was doing a lot of shit like beforehand and had some like, you know, he had well, some he had some movies behind him. That's what he should have been doing this whole time is he should have been there in Hollywood trying to do other shit and saying, and "Hey, look, these are all my credits. Here's all my yeah. here's, here's my here's my resume basically." I mean, Spawn is not like a Spider-Man. Like you can't No. You know what I mean? You can't go to a company and say, "Hey, make a Spawn movie." I oh, want, like, yeah. I, I want to make all the monies. You guys do everything that you want, and it's got to be rated R. Money. It's yeah, it's not going to happen. It's yeah, that's not the other thing too. Happen. He wants to make it so with everything going against the film that he is a first time director or first time screenwriter. He wants. It's got a ten million dollar budget. It's hell of it's a, it's a spawn of hell. 
and and um and he was he wanted complete creative control over it and a rated r movie this, yes and yeah. rated r so essentially what's going to happen <laughs> is that spawn is going to be the human character for like the first hour and 45 minutes right and then he's going to be spawned the last five minutes of the movie or we're going to get Facebook updates every fucking year for the next 10 years that Todd McFarlane is still making this movie. Because that's what's been going on. Yeah, it has been. It's been, it's been a long road. I mean, how it's many been... times that, how many, I mean, he's been teasing this movie since the first one ended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know, man. I, I know that Blumhouse, uh, who's behind it, who offered it the dough up, um, They've been making. I mean, they've been churning out hits, but these are movies that are like low, like like but Get Out only costs. Yeah, like, type like Get like Get Out only costs like four million, and it did a shit ton of money. You know, um, I mean, look at a movie like other... um, fuck, what's a low budget? Look at look at a movie like Kick Ass. That movie wasn't ten million dollars. No, and it it did it made quite a bit of money too. Right, but it wasn't ten million dollars. No. I no. have no idea how the fuck he's going to do this. No fucking but, clue. But see, there clearly, you know, as somebody who's never made a movie before, because no, nobody's told do, him how much shit costs. No, I mean, th- this is the company that does that did. I mean, they've had a phenomenal year, by the way, because like Split only costs like eight or nine million dollars. Yeah, but that's that movie, horror. In that movie, I know that's what I'm telling you is that they're known for low budget horror movies, Paranormal Activity, Insidious, Sinister, Whiplash, The Visit, which is. M. Nat Shyamalan. Well, they, they, you know, they've given money to him twice. Try and prove us wrong, but I've read a Spawn comic book, and the fucking the, if you read one comic book from Spawn, you tell me how the fuck he's going to make this movie for ten million dollars. No, I don't. I don't. I just. I don't know. Either that or the special effects are going to look fucking comical. Yeah, I mean, for the last like eight nine years, this this company has only been known for their horror movies. Like making all kinds of money, and that's uh, that's a cool thing to like. I that's when I their found niche. out no, I when I found out that it was a horror uh, a horror you know type production company, I was like, oh, that makes complete sense because Spawn is kind of in the horror realm. But when I saw the budget, I was like, what? Yeah, it's fucking impossible. And that's like a high budget movie for Blumhouse. They don't normally pay very much. I mean, their productions are very low, and the and the and the money that comes in is very high. So I don't know how much of an origin story this is, but if you don't put that guy in the suit in like the first like half part of it, you're gonna yeah. lose your audience. Oh, big t- yeah, big time. I mean, read the very first Spawn comic book. Read the first Spawn comic book. So good. Read the very first one, and you tell me how he makes the first panel for under ten million dollars. <laughs> Because uh, the it's movie a lot, posters it's a are going to cost different. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, exactly, exactly. Marketing is going to cost more than ten million. Oh yeah, market. They're going to have to pay like three or four times. It's not going to be fucking Todd McFarlane sitting on his desk, you know, in his fucking drawing room, telling you that the movie's coming out. Because that's what he fucking <laughs> does for this movie. <laughs> the, the marketing's all going to be on YouTube and Facebook. I mean, you've seen the videos, right? Where he's just sitting there on yeah. his drawing table, is like. And he updates you on this, you know, Todd McFarlane updates Spawn movie. And it's, so, and it's the same shit that's been going on for like 10 years. I'm trying to get it done. I want an rated R movie. I want creative control. That's, he's been saying the same shit for like 10 years. In the like, like, go, practically like, at, the desk, at the same desk. At the same desk. At the same desk, the same message. And it's like, you're not right. updating. You're just repeating it with different words. <laughs> and then finally, like, you were better off just kept telling me for another 10 years like, I would have just kept believing you for another 10 years. I would have believed you more if you just kept me on the hook for 20 years telling me you were going to make a Spawn movie than if you told me you were going to make a Spawn movie for $10 million. <laughs> I wonder if it's going to be animated. He's going to have to do some fucking, like, animation off a notebook pad. Like, <laughs> like go to the guys that did Castlevania. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where, like... Uh, where you were bored in school and you, you know, you had like the post-it notes and you would draw like a, a, a dot on the left side of the post, like the very last, the very last post-it note. And then the next page you would move it over a little bit more and then you would just flip all the post-it notes. 
That's how <laughs> that's how he's going to have to create the special effects for ten million dollars. Uh, oh my god! So we're essentially going to watch a stop go motion post it note. It's going to be movie. it's going to be the first ever. Uh, <laughs> please, what was that? Uh, Jack Black movie. Uh, uh, please be kind. Rewind or something like that. Oh God, where they. <laughs> Where they reenacted all the movies? Yeah, that's he's that's that's the type of movie we're gonna we're gonna fucking see for Spawn. They just <laughs> they just need to he needs to stick to toys. His toys are badass. Uh, I mean, a, I mean, he, look, Spawn's a great comic book. I just wish that he wasn't so fucking hard headed. You know, he's got the same thing as like George Lucas did, where Lucas was burned by the studio, right? And I right. get that, I get that, but like the studio pushed you to make a really good first film. I mean, not first film, sorry. Of, of you know, second film. That was the mm-hmm. second film, right? Star Wars was the second film. Yeah. Right. So they push you to make like when you're the great, the greatness comes out when you're pushed to the edge. You know, and I feel like that should be the same way for for McFarlane, where you know he gets a bigger budget. I want him to have a bigger budget because I want to see a good Spawn movie. But, yeah. But him doing it like. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It's almost like a uh, like a fan film at this point. Oh, I'd rather I, see a fan I, film. I, I, I don't think fan films I, are really good. Yeah, I, I really I yeah I don't really have high hopes for this movie. It bums me out. On I never, so I didn't many think, levels, I didn't think we would end this casserole episode talking about Spawn. <laughs> well, we definitely don't got to end it uh, because I'm getting upset. But uh, and you're still sick, so you don't want to go to bed angry. Well, uh, the good news is, is now we have something else to be angry about other than DC movies. <laughs> yeah, Snyder's like, oh, I could breathe a little yeah, bit now. But yeah. McFarlane's getting the heat. Yeah, McFarlane, don't put strings on fucking Spawn's outfit. Or actually, yeah. <laughs> you might, if you put strings you on Spawn's outfit. You might have out- to. Yeah, if you put strings on Spawn's outfit, I'll understand because you fucking got a budget for $10 million. It's like Team America, but Spawn. Oh, it's thank like- God, that's awesome. <laughs> Team America costs more money than that. It did. It got like thirty five million. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> I think like knocked up costs more money than that. Yeah, you should give oh, this movie. Fuck. Now you should give this movie to Matt Stone and Trey Parker with Seth Rogen as Spawn. That would be better than you'd Todd probably, McFarlane doing his own movie. You'd probably get more money too. <laughs> I just want Holy Spawn shit. to go. Oh, 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 <laughs> Holy shit, do you understand? Like, I'm, I'm thinking about all the movies, like normal, like regular comedies and dramas going through my head right now with a bigger budget than $10 million. Yeah. <laughs> that would have no special effects. No special effects whatsoever. And they have it knocked up was more than $10 million. Well, listen, you know, the movie that we're going to review next week, because uh, we weren't able to do it this week, but Dunkirk, 10 minutes of that movie was probably $20 million. I mean, I. <laughs> You can't, you cannot make a Spawn comic book movie for ten million dollars and make it look polished, make it look good. I mean, even Deadpool. How much was Deadpool? Like sixty-five. Yeah. Which for a superhero movie, that's that's fucking amazing. 60, and probably fifteen or twenty of that was the end end of that movie, which was right, completely amazing. Right, and and you know Ryan Reynolds probably took a hit just to get the back end money, which would have been smart because he made shit ton of money. Right. So I've heard the second movie is going to be budgeted around the same because you know they I mean they have ways around whatever. But sixty five million is a lot big difference than ten million. So Yeah it is. I, it's a fifty million dollar fucking difference. And and it's a it's a it's a visual effect heavy movie. I mean Spawn walking around with that cape you know, exactly. Okay. Like Colossus cost a lot of money in that movie too. Yeah. So if you take Colossus out, you're, you're dropping that budget. But again, you can have Deadpool walking around in that outfit, and it's not going to cost you a fucking. It's not going to cost you a lot of money. You yeah. can't have Spawn walking around hell like he's fucking walking down Main Street, <laughs> suburbia. <laughs> like it doesn't fucking work that way. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what they're thinking, man. I really. I don't. Maybe it's going to be like far away visuals. Is he going to fucking you know? take like visual effects from the first movie and just intersplice them with this one? <laughs> that would make a lot more sense. There's going to be uh, like there's going to be parts of other movies in this movie. That's how they're going to get around it. I could see ILM just like pissed. Like yeah. what the fuck? There's going to be parts of like <laughs> think of a there's going to be parts of like Mustafar in this movie. <laughs> He pieces together all these different properties. Yeah, that that looks like hell. Uh, actually, well, it's Blumhouse, so he's like Martin. He's like, Martin Sheen shows up. 
with his black yeah. hair. Yeah. <laughs> you've got so it's Blumhouse, right? So you've got you've got like <clears throat> M. Not Shyamalan's movie, The Visit or Split. You have the you see the people like running around in the background. <clears throat> and Spawn is just, you know, I don't know. It's just a dude with like like a just a mask on with, with like string. a red cape, a string. with string, <laughs> with just a red cape. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it looks I like just Captain see Underpants <laughs> <laughs> with just f- like red construction paper behind he's him. Just, he's just wearing black underwear, and like yeah. a cape. And red construction uh, paper is like flailing in the fan <laughs> in the background, no, like red streamers from the party store. Yeah, uh, and like the kid from Problem Child is dressed as the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Problem child. Uh, was it John Ritter in those movies? Yeah, yeah. Oh God. Problem child is the devil. In, in yeah. The, oh my that's God. That's how they're gonna get under ten million dollars. <laughs> Splice in the problem child. Yeah. Uh, like that. That property only costs us twenty five grand. So we, yeah. we could use. Yeah. We could remember, use that. Do you remember him sitting there in the in the devil outfit in the movie? And he goes. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, that's funny. With the red fork, yeah, yep, God, yep. the red pitchfork. This, uh, this killing me. Uh, <laughs> that, that's what our, that's what our ten million dollars Spawn movie is gonna look like. Uh, and man. then the movie ends on a high note where Chunk is saying, "Hey, you guys." <laughs> or you actually finally get a clip of the, like nine, like not like nine million dollars was spent on the visual effects on the suit for the last two minutes of the movie. Or thirty seconds, and then it like yeah, but it's the like sequel. but it's like unfinished, like the fucking Wolverine like Origins one where he's in the bathroom and his fucking claws <laughs> look all like they're separated from his hand. Or or it's like he he just wear like Daredevil season one. He just wears like you know a handkerchief on his head and a cape, and then at the very end of the movie you see him in the outfit like for like thirty seconds. Oh god, that uh, sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> credits. Uh, <laughs> credits you're like yay i can't wait for the sequel yeah <clears throat> it's like oh my god it's like it's all i'm remembering that movie with jack black uh be kind rewind <laughs> where the word did foil and shit. yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> they don't have like real uh, guns they have guns from like the cops have guns from like the dollar store right right their Was outfits it the, don't the, even fit don't all the videos like get erased somehow? Like yeah, some magnetic. Yeah, yeah. What a stupid premise. <laughs> hey, I bet you that movie cost more than ten million dollars. <laughs> Just mentioning all the movies in the videos probably cost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Every oh, single movie Lord. that we mentioned probably cost more than ten million dollars. <laughs> Save for maybe Problem Child, which is how they're gonna get the problem child in spawn. <laughs> No, a problem child probably cost. That's how they're gonna get it made. They're gonna get, they're that. gonna have them like sub. They're gonna have them like subcontract some of that. It's gonna be like Spawn Problem Child Four. <laughs> the Spawn of Problem Child. <laughs> <laughs> the return of Michael Jaw White. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that poor guy. Where is where is where is he been? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they plucked He's probably obscurity. making movies that have a bigger budget than $10 million. But they, <laughs> they, they plucked him out of obscurity the second they got him. They just somebody, threw like a somebody, mask on him. Somebody tweet us or send us a message. Tell me how much the first Sharknado movie made, uh, cost. <laughs> I want to know how much the Sharknado movies cost. Because those special <laughs> effects are fucking awful. <laughs> I want to know how much that budget is. Because I want to, I want to gauge how fucking bad this movie's gonna look. <laughs> it's gonna be shot on cell phones, the iPhone 10. <laughs> Aren't they doing like a fifth or sixth Sharknado right now? I don't know, but those special effects are terrible, and there, there's a lot of special effects in those movies. So, if those movies cost more than ten million dollars, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, my new favorite thing is gonna be making fun of this movie. Okay, it says here Sharknado costs just under two million. Oh God, you got off lucky there, McFarlane. So how much? Put did, four. Check put problem four child. Together. Pre- check problem child. Put four Sharknados to make a spawn, I guess. Check problem child. 
was that budget? I'm gonna um, shit if it's like twelve million. Oh, uh, wouldn't that be hilarious? That would be fucking awesome. Uh, <laughs> problem, child, movie budget. Oh my gosh, this is too funny. Oh god, you're gonna laugh, dude. What is it? Get, what is it? Guess how much this movie costs. What now, is it? Guess. What is it? Uh, no, no, take take one guess. Fifteen million. No, ten million dollars. How much this movie costs? Oh my god. <laughs> This has now become the best podcast ever. <laughs> so and, Spawn oh my God. has the Dude. same fucking budget as Problem Child. <laughs> Holy Dude, shit. This movie made, you're not going to believe this, but this Problem Child made over $70 million. That is probably $70 more million million than this movie is going to make. You're never going to guess. <laughs> you're never going to guess the Rotten Tomatoes for Problem Child. Uh, 70 Four percent. Wow. Four percent. Yeah. Tom McFarlane has a Hellspawn movie with a budget the same as Problem Child. <laughs> this is the stupidest thing. This is thing. fucking Get, awesome. It's even better. Problem Child 2 costs more. Oh, it my God. 15 million. <laughs> which, hey, which is a lot. That's actually okay. Ten million dollars in nineteen ninety, dude. That's more like twenty or twenty five million. Oh, that makes it even worse. Yeah. So that so means like talking... McFarlane really has like two million dollars. Exactly. Oh exactly. my god. This is. I mean. This is awesome. This is the best news I've had all day. Oh, we're we're gonna be doing memes like crazy now. Oh, this hashtags. is so good. Ten million dollar problem so child spawn. Yeah. This is so good. <laughs> this could not have worked out any better. Fucking problem, child. I'm going to have to put that on the advert sitting oh on Spawn's god. lap. Oh, my God. Ah. This is so good. <laughs> All right. We're going to end this on a high note. <laughs> <laughs> or a low well, that note was, for uh, <laughs> Yeah, sorry, man. Anyway, well, that was Casserole number eight, uh, episode 91 of Chew on This, a Nerd United podcast. I'm BJ. Vic. Until next time, folks, chew on that. Later. <laughs>